Hi there. This video will show you how to use the basic functions of the Faust programming language, such as its different operator statements and primitives. Faust, that stands for a functional audio stream, is a functional programming language specifically designed for real-time signal processing and synthesis. Faust targets high-performance signal processing applications and audio plugins for a variety of platforms and standards. For more information about what Faust is intended for, you can have a look at our video, What is Faust? And the link should be displayed now on your screen. Also, to get more precise information about Faust in general, we advise you to refer to the Faust reference available online on our website, and the link should also be displayed on the screen now. Finally, in this tutorial, we assume that Faust is correctly installed on your computer as well as all its sites programs. So, in this tutorial, we're going to use Faustworks, which is an IDE integrated development environment for Faust. It is a very helpful tool for Faust beginners as it displays in real time both bug diagrams and C code from the Faust code you're writing. Also, as the compilation is always processed, you'll know very quickly if your false code is correct or not. Although, we have to say that this is still a very experimental program, so we can't really guarantee its stability now. Okay, so let's have a closer look to Fastworks. Uh, so, in Fastworks, you have different frames. So, this is the main frame. And in this main frames, uh, we can see all the .dsp uh, Faust codes uh, that are in our working directory. So, here I have two different Faust codes. I have this simple program and I have uh, this uh, other simple program called Draft DSP. So if I click on it, uh, then it will open the Faust code, which is here. And so as you can see, it is very simple. Uh, we can see the block diagram of this Faust code, and we can also see the corresponding C++ code generated by Faust here on the right frame. Also, there is an error messages uh, frame uh, where all the error messages are displayed if your false code is wrong. <clears throat> okay, uh, so we can choose between different uh, false code, as you can see. And uh, when we will write the false code, the block diagrams will be automatically updated as the C++ code. Uh, as in any other program, we can choose to create new files, to open new files, or to close uh, files that are in our uh, working frame here. Uh, also, we can zoom in to have a closer look to the block diagrams, uh, as you can see here. Uh, we can decide to open our block diagrams uh, in our usual web browser. So here it is open Safari. Okay, same thing here. Uh, you have different options. Also, uh, you can uh, choose to use a larger font uh, if you don't see uh, the false code or the C++ code enough, or we can zoom out uh, on the font as well. Finally, here we can decide uh, which architecture will be used to compile our Faust objects. So here we only have a few architecture files. We have uh, Pure Data, Maximus P, and Core Audio Qt. And uh, here we can choose the mode in which uh, your program will work. So scalar, vectorial, and parallel, and parallel with OpenMP. Okay. Now, let's have a look to our first Faust program, which is a simple noise generator, and this is this program. So I'm going to zoom in on it so we can see the blocked diagram of this program. So once again, the false code is here, the generated C++ code is here, and uh, the block diagram uh, of uh, this false code is displayed here. A false program is essentially a list of statements. Uh, these statements can be declarations, imports, 
definitions and also documentation tags, which we don't have uh, here. And uh, we can also have uh, operational C++ style comments uh, like that one here. Uh, so we have uh, here a one line comment, but we can also have written something like that. And this is absolutely working as well, like in C++ if you want to have a comments on several lines. All right, I'm going to back go back. All right, so these programs exhibits various kinds of statements. Uh, we have two declarations here. We have one import, uh, we have a comment, and we have a definition, which is the main definition because of process here. We won't talk about documentation statements in this tutorial. The keyword process is the equivalent of main in C and C++. Any false program to be valid must at least define process. So this is the only definition you need in a false program. So for example, if I go in the other program we've seen before, as you can see, the only definition I have in this program is process. Okay, and this is working fine, and this is compiling, as you can see here. Finally, uh, metadata declarations are optional and typically used to document files projects. So those are metadata declarations. And the main difference between metadata declarations and a comment is that uh, they will appear in the C++ code generated by Faust, as you can see here. So here we have name and we have copyright uh, because they were declared here. Well, I'd say that a good practice is to start a false program with some standard declaration. Uh, file imports allow to import definitions from other sorted files. Uh, so here we'll need some definitions. Uh, this is for the nonce function, uh, which is declared in music.lib. The false distribution includes uh, several libraries like music.lib, uh, so they are already all installed on your computer, and you can find them in the architecture directory of the false distribution. So here we're using music.lib, but we could have used uh, filter.lib, math.lib, effect.lib, and many others. Now, let's see how definitions work in Faust. A definition associates an identifier with an expression it stands for. Definitions are essentially a convenient shortcut avoiding to type long expressions. During compilation, more precisely during the evaluation stage, identifiers are replaced by their definitions. It is therefore always equivalent to use an identifier or directly its definition. So let's have a look at it. So here I open draft.dsp, which is um, almost empty Faust code. And I'm gonna write a definition here. Okay, so basically what I will do is just create a simple uh, Faust counter. Okay, so I write counter here, say equal. And this counter will add one to the signal resulting from this operation, like that. Okay, sorry. Yeah. And I end with a semicolon, of course. And this uh, shall be almost a valid Faust code. Yeah. Right, and now I can use it in process. Okay, great, and we can see the results display here uh, on the screen as a block diagram. Okay, so one thing we have to say uh, before explaining what's going on here is what is uh, this uh, simple operator? So the underscore. Underscore corresponds uh, in Faust to a basic signal. So as we had before, uh, if we just put an underscore in our process, 
uh, because underscore it corresponds to a signal, it will just take an input signal and return this uh, signal, so output this signal. So this is working. Okay, so now if I put a counter back here, we can say that block diagram. So this definition is uh, very simple and it's not taking any input signal. So this is not a function. Uh, one thing we could have done here, as we said before, is just using this simple algorithm directly in our process. And the result is exactly the same. So um, if we use definition, it's only to have a more uh, readable uh, false code as in any other programming language. Okay. So I want to explain now what's going on here, uh, here in uh, this uh, simple definition. Uh, but we'll talk uh, about all these operators later uh, on in this tutorial. Okay, so um, now uh, it is important to say that multiple definitions of the same identifier are not allowed in Faust unless it is a pattern matching based definition. And we'll also see how pattern matching works later on uh, in this tutorial. Okay, now we can have a look uh, to function definitions. Definitions with formal parameters correspond to functions definitions. Uh, so now if we modify the code of our counter, uh, so we'll also change the name because we will totally transform it and we'll just create an adder. Okay. So if we keep basically just the plus one and uh, the input signal, uh, then we get a very simple error. So we get and we take an input signal and we add one to the signal and we return the result. And this is our simple false program. Uh, another way to write it would have uh, been uh, with using uh, local variable for input signals. So here if I just put x and if I replace the underscore signal by x then we will get exactly the same result. Okay, so this is a function definition in Faust. So now let's talk about expressions in Faust. Despite its textual syntax, Faust is conceptually a block diagram language. Faust expressions uh, represent DSP block diagrams and are assembled from primitive ones using various composition operations. So in Faust we have five binary composition operations that are available to combine block diagrams. We have the parallel composition, the sequential composition, the split composition, the merge composition, and finally the recursive composition. So basically one can think of each of these composition operations as a particular way to connect to block diagrams. So now we're gonna detail each of them and see how this work. So first I'm gonna zoom on draft uh, DSP that I have here, uh, which is an empty phone's code. Okay, and we're gonna use it to demonstrate uh, how this uh, expressions works uh, work in Faust. So the first we're gonna present is the parallel composition. Okay, so I'm just gonna write it down here so you know what we're doing. So the parallel uh, expression in Faust is symbolized by the comma character. Okay. So basically the parallel composition tells uh, that we'll have two different parallel signals. Uh, so in the block diagrams, we will have uh, one signal in top uh, of the other. So as we said before, the underscore character symbolizes signals. So basically if we have uh, two signals, um, two parallel signals, 
then we shall see the result displayed on the screen here. And we have two parallel signals. Uh, so one input, uh, one output, uh, one input, one output. Okay, so this is the most simple thing that we can do with parallel composition, and we can use as many signals as we want. So here we're using uh, two signals, but uh, we can use three signals in our parallel composition, and then we had three signals. Uh, we can use four signals, and uh, yeah, as many as we want. So in this parallel composition, uh, we can also use definitions, of course. So for example, uh, let's uh, define A. Uh, A will add uh, one to an input signal and return the result, output the result. Uh, and we can define B, uh, which will add, uh, or even let's say multiply, uh, 0 0.5 um, to its input signal and output the result. We're going to integrate A and B in our process. So I'm going to clear that and I'm going to use A and B in parallel. So here we should see the result display on the screen. So as uh, we can see, uh, A is here and B is here, and they are uh, totally parallel uh, definitions of the other. So we're taking one input signal here and adding one and outputting the result. And here we're taking one input signal, multiplying this uh, signal by 0 0.5 and outputting the result. So this is a parallel composition. And um, as we've shown before, uh, we can create even another uh, definition, uh, which is C, uh, which is a division. Uh, and we're dividing the signal by three, for example. And if we integrate uh, this uh, division in our process here with a parallel uh, composition uh, operator, then we have um, three uh, parallel block diagrams. So this is the most uh, basic expression in Faust, I'd say. Uh, and this is symbolized by uh, the comma symbol. So let's talk about now um, about the sequential composition. So sequential composition in Faust are uh, creating uh, using uh, the column character. So basically, it is used that way. So here, if we put A, and here, if we put B, what will happen is that the output of A will be connected to the input of B. So we'll have a sequential composition. And we can see the result display here on the screen. So basically, basically here, A is taking an input signal and the output of A is connected to B. Uh, and uh, we can add uh, C here uh, to this process. And uh, we can see the results uh, here as well display on the screen. Okay, so A is connected to B and B is connected to C. And we have a sequential composition. So, of course, uh, what we can do is to use uh, Faust expressions uh, together. So, um, here, if we want to just uh, write exactly the same thing, the same block of our block diagram, uh, which is that one, A, B, C, uh, in parallel uh, of that one, then what we can do is just add parenthesis here, and to write it again. So we can have, uh, or even the opposite, for example. So let's connect C to B and B to A. And then the result should be displayed on the screen. And uh, yay. So here we have uh, two parallel uh, operations that are going on. So the first one, uh, A connected to B and B connected to C. And um, the opposite one, C connected to B and B connected to A. Okay. So let's talk about now another uh, Faust 
expression. Uh, and uh, this uh, first expression is the split expression. So, the split expression is symbolized by this uh, operator. Okay, so as you can see, this is very simple. So, what's going on here is uh, that split will take uh, one input signal or several input signal and split uh, all of them into different signals. So for example here, if we want to split uh, this signal into two different signals, then we have to tell Faust that we want two signals after this one signal, and then we can see the result. So we take one signal and the signal is split out into two different signals. Okay, uh, so if we add another underscore character here, instead of having two different signals, we have three different signals and four, etc., etc. So we can do whatever we want. Okay, in the same way here, if we have two uh, input signals and we want to split them so of course this is not working uh, we can do it by doing exactly the same thing sorry okay so now what's going on is that we take two input signals as we can see here and these two input signals are split out uh, each of them into two different signals because uh, from two signal we want to have four signals <clears throat> sorry okay uh, so one important thing that we have to say here is that um, the number of inputs here has to be a multiple of the number of outputs here. Uh, because, of course, um, if here we just tell us that we want three signals uh, from two signals, then um, the first compiler returns a uh, neural message. And this is normal because, in that case, Faust don't know which signal uh, will have to be split out into uh, three, uh, into two signals, and which one uh, would just uh, stay the same. So those uh, n number of signals and uh, this number of signal and this number of signal uh, in each side of the operator um, has to be multiple uh, of each other. Okay, so now it works. Great. Okay, we can write some more complicated things. So let's say, for example, uh, here uh, that we have two uh, different numbers uh, in a parallel composition, which are 10 and 20. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out. So we have 10 and 20. Uh, what we wanna do now is to add uh, 10 and 20 together multiply 10 and 20 together and also divide 10 and 20 together and uh, output the result of uh, these operations into three different uh, outputs. Okay, so once again, we wanna add them, we wanna multiply them and we wanna divide them. So to do it, we're just uh, gonna use uh, the split operator, like that, and uh, this will work. Okay, so uh, as we can see, 10 is added to 20, and uh, the result of this operation is outputted. Uh, 10 is multiplied uh, by 20, and uh, the result of this variation is also outputted. And finally, 10 is divided by 20, and uh, the result of this variation is outputted. Okay. Uh, and uh, we can add another uh, operation here, like another addition at the end. And this works. Uh, as well, and uh, we can uh, do whatever we want from that. Okay, 
So if we have a split expression, a split operator in Faust, of course, uh, we need a merge uh, operator, which is the opposite of a split operator, of course. So you can probably guess uh, how this uh, operator will look uh, like. So basically, it's just uh, the reverse uh, operator of splits uh, doing it. OK. So now what we might want to do uh, is to merge the four signals uh, from uh, this process into one signal. So we can just tell Faust here uh, that uh, from the four different signals from here, we want to have only one signal. And then Faust will merge them all together. And it works. Uh, and uh, this is also going to work uh, if we have an even number of signal, of course. Okay, so if we have only three different signals, then uh, these three different signals will merge into one signal. Okay. So in the same way then for the split operator, uh, instead of just merging them here, uh, we can merge them into one operation. So let's say for example that we want to uh, add uh, all these uh, three signals. But as we can see, this is not working. And this is because here we have an even number of signals. Uh, and because we have an even number of signals, uh, Faust don't know uh, how to combine the three different signals uh, into one operator. So here, uh, whether we can add zero to tell Faust uh, what it has to do, okay? So basically here it is just merging uh, the results of the addition and the division altogether and adding it to the multiplication and we can use zero, zero wherever we want uh, here uh, to root the signal in the right way. Or we can just uh, put back uh, the operator with before, uh, which was an addition and then it works. All right. Okay, grand. Uh, so now we're going to talk uh, about the last uh, operator uh, and the last expression that we have in Faust, uh, which is definitely the most complex operation in terms of connections uh, that we can do in Faust, uh, which is the recursive uh, operation. Okay. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to clear all what we did here. So, recursive uh, expression in Faust is symbolized by the tilde uh, character. So, here if we put uh, A and here if we put B, we shall see the result display on the screen. So basically what's going on here uh, is that A is taking an input signal and uh, B as well. And each of them are outputting one signal. So A will be connected to B and the output of B will be connected to the input of A, as we can see here. And also, uh, the output of A will split out into two different signals, so one going into the input of B and one uh, at the output of our uh, block uh, diagram, as we can see it here. Okay, so A take one input signal. Uh, this input signal uh, comes from B uh, because of the recursive composition. Uh, and uh, this signal, the output signal of A is uh, split out into two different signals, one going to the input of B and one that is outputted. Okay, uh, so with that, uh, we can decide to do more complex uh, things. For, for example, uh, if we recall uh, the simple program that we've seen before uh, at the beginning of this tutorial, uh, where we're uh, using a noise, uh, where we're creating a noise generator. 
So for this noise generator, we can see here that we have a recursive composition, uh, which looks pretty much the same than the one we have here. So if we want to reproduce uh, this composition uh, in our false code here, what we can do is just uh, replace uh, one here uh, by the value that we have here, which is uh, 12, uh, 300, uh, 345. Okay, uh, great. And uh, we can replace the value that we have here as well, uh, which then is uh, 11, oh, three, five, one, five, two, four, five. Okay. And now we have exactly the same thing here. Or not exactly, actually, pretty much the same thing. Because as we can see here, uh, all these operations were uh, used in the same definition, uh, which is random. Which is not the case here, because we have uh, one definition for uh, this operation, which is B, and one definition for this operation, which is A. So what we can do is just to... Uh, use this operation directly in our process here, uh, replacing uh, the definition in the process. And then we will have exactly the same uh, block diagram than the one we have uh, in this area. So we want to detail now uh, what's going on here in terms of uh, digital signal processing. Uh, but if you want to learn how to build a noise uh, generator uh, in the Faust programming language, uh, you can uh, have a look at the tutorial, uh, the video tutorial, and uh, the address of this video tutorial is displayed on the screen now. Okay, so now let's talk about iterations in Faust. Iterations are analogous to for loops in C++ and provide a convenient way to automate some complex block diagram constructions. So in Faust we have four different kinds of iteration constructions and uh, I'm gonna show them to you now. Okay. Uh, so, the most basic one is the parallel constrictions uh, with a certain number of iteration, and for that, we're gonna use uh, the par um, primitive, which is that one. Okay, so this uh, function takes uh, three inputs arguments. So the first one uh, is a variable name for a counter. The second one is the number of iteration. And finally, the third one uh, is uh, the expression that we want to iterate several times. So for example, uh, in that case, we can just, let's say that we want to multiply a number by two, or multiply a signal by two. So let's see the results. So as we can see, we have four iterations uh, of uh, this uh, operation. So one, two, three, four. Uh, what about I here? So I uh, is basically just uh, recording uh, the number of each iteration. So basically, for example, if we replace uh, 2 here by i, then we'll get the following thing. So we can see uh, what kind of number is saved in i. So we can say that in the first iteration, i is equal to 0. Uh, in the second iteration, it is equal to 1, and etc., etc. So i can be used uh, within the operation uh, in each iteration uh, to uh, design some uh, things. Okay, and uh, we'll see later that uh, it is a very helpful tool when we want to build pattern matching uh, system uh, with several iterations. So if we have the parallel uh, constriction, we also have uh, the sequential constriction, of course, as we've seen before. So in that case, uh, 
the output of each iteration will be connected to the input of the next iteration. So uh, we can see that we have still four iterations uh, of our um, expression. So here, 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 and here. And uh, they are all connected uh, sequentially together. Another um, iterations, uh, another iteration in Faust uh, will be uh, the sum iteration. So in that case, the result of the first iteration uh, will be added to the result of the second iteration, and this result will be added to uh, the result of the third iteration, and etc. and etc. So we have, in that case, four different inputs, uh, like in the parallel composition, and we only have uh, one output. And finally, the last kind of iterations uh, we can use in Faust uh, is um, the product iteration. And in that case, instead of adding uh, each iteration with each other, with the results of the, the previous iteration, then we multiply the result of the previous iteration with uh, the result of the current iteration, and etc. and etc. Okay, so here we have four iterations, but if I change this number to six, we'll see that the block diagram will be automatically updated. So this is a very powerful tool uh, and very useful tool that will be used quite often in Faust. And especially once again with pattern matching, as we'll see it later in this tutorial. Now let's talk about numerical expressions in Faust. Numerical expressions are essentially syntactic sugar, allowing to use a familiar infix notation to express mathematical expression. So we have three different kinds of mathematical expression, uh, of numerical expression, sorry, in, uh, in Faust. So we have maths expressions, we have bitwise expressions, and we have comparison. So first, let's detail the mathematical expressions. So they're pretty much the same that the one we can find uh, in C++. So we can uh, add signals together or things together well, basically everything is a uh, signal in Faust, so this is what we want to say. So as you can see here, we're adding two signals together and uh, we're outputting the result of this addition. Uh, we can subtract signal uh, in Faust as well, as you can see. We can multiply signals. We can divide signals. We can also use a modulo operations, operation. And finally, we have a syntactic sugar uh, for uh, exponents uh, operation, as you will see. And here we can set the syntactic sugar because uh, this character is directly replaced uh, in the block diagram by the power f expression, uh, which is an expression which look uh, like a lot uh, the math dot uh, h expression from C plus plus. Okay, so after math expression, we have bitwise expressions. Uh, they're also pretty much the same than in C++. Uh, we have um, the OR uh, bitwise uh, operator. We have the AND uh, operator. We have the XOR operator. Okay. And we also have uh, the change of bit position to the right or to the left. So the result of that kind of operation uh, 
will be a bit uh, result. So now uh, the last kind of numerical expressions we have is thrust are a comparison. So we can um, compare a signal to another to say if it is a smaller than the second signal uh, or if it is bigger, if it is bigger or equal, and if it is smaller or equal. Okay, we can also compare two signals to see they are equals. And finally, if they are different. The results of that kind of operation is exactly the same than in C++. Uh, so if the results of the comparison is true, then the number one uh, will be outputted uh, from this block. Uh, and if the result of the comparison is wrong, then uh, zero will be outputted. Okay, now let's talk about time expressions in Faust. Uh, time expressions are used to express uh, delay. Uh, we have two different uh, time expression in Faust uh, to express uh, delay. So the most basic one uh, is the apostrophe uh, expression. So here we have one input signal and this input signal will be delayed by one sample. If we add another apostrophe here, then uh, our input signal will be delayed by two sample. So this is not a very convenient way if we want to have very long uh, delay uh, in a false program. So if we want to have longer delay and if we want to change in real time uh, the size of our delay length, uh, then we'll have to use the at operator. And after we just tell the at operator the number of sample by which uh, the signal will be delayed. So let's say, for example, here 10. So in that case, the input signal will be delayed by 10 samples and the result of this delay will be outputted. So as uh, we said before, uh, this number doesn't have to be fixed. Uh, we can change the value of this number uh, while the program is executing. So we can use variable to, controls, uh, to control uh, the delay length. The only thing is that we have to make sure that this value will be bounded and also that it will be a positive value. So for more information about building uh, eco or a delay effect in Faust, we advise you to have a look at our tutorial on how to build a stereo feedback delay effect uh, in Faust. So you shall see the link display on the screen now. Now let's talk about environment expressions. We have a different kind of environment expressions in Faust and uh, we're going to detail them now. So the first one uh, is the with constriction and it allows to specify a local environment. So that's what we're going to show now. So in uh, this false code, I'm going to create a new definition and uh, this definition will be just a simple function, which is an adder, uh, which will take one input signal and add a value contained in A uh, to this signal. All right, so if I try to compile it and if I try to add the adder to process, uh, then the compilation won't work and we get an error message and we can see here uh, that the false compiler is complaining because A is not declared anywhere in our false code. So uh, if I only use A uh, in adder, uh, maybe I will want just to create it as a local variable of A. Then I will use the with environment. So I use with, I open a curly bracket uh, and I close this curly bracket. As you can see, uh, the semicolon has moved uh, till the end and we don't have um, semicolon anymore here. So it is like everything was on the same line. 
So here I'm going to define A and uh, I will store a value in A. Let's say that uh, I will store it too. And now this should work. You don't have to forget uh, the semicolon at the end of this declaration. Otherwise, it won't work. So A is here. Uh, we can see that 2 was uh, the value stored in A. And uh, our adder is working correctly as it should. Okay, uh, so this is the with environment. And in this uh, environment, uh, I can also create local functions. So let's say uh, that uh, here I'll create a function uh, called uh, multi. Uh, for multiplier and this function will take an input signal and multiply it uh, by 4 okay all right so compilation is working fine and here uh, I will connect uh, the output of uh, this operation uh, to mult and we shall see the result display here on the screen. So this is working fine. So uh, here I have the first operation, which is uh, A plus uh, the input signal. And here I have uh, MULT, uh, which has been integrated correctly in our block diagram. Okay. So another environment expression uh, is uh, environment. And environment uh, allows to create an explicit environment. It is like uh, with, so what we have here, but without the left hand expression. So it is like with, but without that. Uh, it is a convenient way to group together related definitions uh, to isolate groups of definitions and also to create a namespace uh, hierarchy. So how environment is uh, working. So now I'm going to create a new definition and this definition will be called constant. Okay. So in this definition, I will create an environment uh, using uh, the environment uh, expression. Okay. Uh, then I open the curly bracket, I close it, and I don't forget the semicolon at the end. And in this environment, I'm going to add uh, some variables. So one variable could be p, and then p will be equal to 3.14. I don't forget the semicolon here as well. And e, and e will be equal to 2.14. 718 okay and i don't forget the semicolon as well here so apparently everything is working uh now i'm going to use uh one of this variable contained in the constant environment uh within my process so one thing that I might want to do here is uh, to add uh, to the result of uh, adder uh, p, which is stored uh, in constant. Uh, then I will call the constant environment and then p just uh, with a dot uh, between uh, those two things and as we can see this is working perfectly okay great uh, and also uh, you can notice that this is exactly like in C++ all right, uh, another uh, environment expression in Faust is uh, libraries uh, import. So we can import uh, libraries in Faust. So the library construct allows to create an environment by reading the definitions from a file. So we can have a file where many mm, functions or variables are declared and we can import all of them in our Foscon just using import. Okay. Oh, I have a phone size problem here. Okay, I'm going to resume again. And I'm going to import uh, one of the included library in the Faust distribution, which is math dot lib 
Okay, I wait for a compilation. So the post code is okay. So now I can use all the function definition and also all the variable definitions that are uh, in math.lib here in my post code. So one of them is uh, sign h, for example. So I'm gonna use it here in my process. So sign h is a function which is defined uh, here in math.lib. And we can see that it works. However, if I disable uh, this line uh, with import library, we can see that it is not working anymore. Uh, and the false compiler is complaining uh, because uh, he doesn't know the function, the function sign h. Okay, so. All right, this is compiling fine and working fine. All right, I talked about uh, variables declared in uh, some libraries. So one of the most important variable declared in math.lib is the sr variable, uh, which corresponds to sampling rate. So uh, if I use this variable like that here in my first code, then uh, the sampling rate uh, used by the system uh, when the first object will be used uh, will be stored in this variable and then we could use it uh, to create our digital signal processor. One last thing about the libraries in Faust is that as uh, uh, we said before, uh, many libraries are included in the Faust distribution and all these libraries contain uh, wonderful functions uh, that are uh, pretty fine for you. And in another tutorial, you can see the address display on the screen now, uh, we'll, be, we'll show you how to use uh, these functions and uh, we'll detail some of them that are very nice. Okay. Uh, the last kind of environment expression in Faust uh, are, uh, is, sorry, the component expression. Uh, so component construction allows to reuse a full Faust program as a simple expression. Okay, so how do we do that? Here we're gonna reuse uh, this Faust program, which is called faustprogram.dsp, that we uh, show, uh, showed at the beginning of this tutorial, and we're gonna reuse it uh, here in uh, this uh, Foscon. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna clear that. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna call the component uh, operator, and then I will uh, use Faust program dot DSP. And this is working. Uh, we can see that we have exactly the same thing uh, in uh, our new program than in the previous program, which is stored in Faust program dot DSP. Okay. If FaustProgram.dsp uh, had uh, an input uh, signal, then uh, we would have an input signal here as well. Two input signal here, two input signal uh, as well in our new Faust code. Uh, one last thing about the component uh, environment expression is that we can redefine uh, functions or variables that are already defined uh, in uh, the call program from the DSP file. To do it, uh, we use uh, square brackets, okay? And here, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna redefine ran max. Uh, so I just uh, redefine ran max here, and I give it a new value, for example, one, I add the semicolon, and now we can see that the value of RANMAX has changed. Uh, so we just redefine the value of RANMAX. So this is a very helpful tool uh, when you are using uh, the component environment expression. Okay, let's talk about now about foreign function expressions. Reference to external C functions, variables, and constants can be introduced using the foreign function mechanism. 
An external C function is declared by indicating its name and signator as well as the required include file. So, for example, in uh, this false code, we want to use a function which is declared in math.h, which is a C function. Okay. So, the function we want to use here uh, is a sine h. Okay, so I will define a new uh, Faust function uh, here. So a sin h uh, is defined uh, in Faust. Now I'm going to use the foreign function mechanism to call it uh, and to import it from uh, math.h. So uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, to tell the foreign function mechanism which function we want to import. So actually this is a sine h. Then we have to indicate to Faust uh, the signator of this function. So this function will return a float number and takes a float number as an input. So we have to tell first all these things. Okay. All right, so here we have math.h, and the last thing we have to do now is uh, to introduce a comment for uh, this function, but we don't want to write anything here. So as we can see, the false code is okay. And now we can use the a sine h function, which is a C++ function directly in our false code. And as we can see, this is working. Okay, we can do exactly the same thing uh, with uh, constants and variable. Then instead of using a foreign function, we will use uh, the keywords, uh, which are uh, f uh, constant or uh, f variable. F variable. Uh, okay, I don't want to show you now uh, how they work because uh, this is exactly the same thing than here. Okay, so we introduced here uh, the signator of a function, so uh, the type uh, of the numbers that are used uh, in a function. Uh, basically, in Faust, we only have two types, uh, which are float numbers or integers. And that's all we need. Uh, so let's say that now I have a float number and uh, this float number will be, for example, 5.45896. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, I want to use this number in my process. Uh, so if I want to cast this number so it will become an integer, I will just have to do that. Okay, so as we can see, uh, this number will be converted uh, to an integer. So a uh, more logical thing will be just to write something like that. So here we have a float number uh, and this float number will be converted uh, as an integer. Another way to do it will have been to write it in the C++ way. So this is the Faust way, using uh, the sequential connection operator. Uh, but we could also have used the um, old-fashioned C++ way to write it, uh, which is something like that. And then we can see that we got exactly the same results. Okay, we can do exactly the other thing. So let's say that here we have uh, five, which is an integer, and we want to convert it as a float number, then we can just do that. Generally in Faust, it's not really a big deal uh, if you only use float numbers uh, because the compiler will optimize the code uh, so you won't have uh, any cast problems uh, in your final C++ code. Okay, now let's talk about the pattern matching facility from Faust. Formal parameters of a function can also be full expressions representing patterns. 
This mechanism allows to algorithmically create and manipulate block diagrams expressions. Okay, so here in our false code, let's say that we want to declare a new variable and this, uh, and we'll store a number in this variable and the number we're going to store is 0. Uh, 0.1. Okay. Uh, so now we want to use uh, this uh, variable in our process and of course this works uh, and the number is stored in P is uh, outputted. Okay, now we will declare uh, one more time uh, P and we'll store a new value in P which is zero and then of course we got uh, probably some problems and troubles uh, because uh, we'll have uh, different uh, values stored in the same variable uh, which is not possible. Okay, so now we're gonna store a new value in P. Okay, so what we want to do now is to output uh, those three uh, values at the same time in our process. To do it, we're going to use uh, the pattern matching system. So here, uh, we're going to uh, use uh, arguments for each of our functions, but instead of uh, putting uh, argument name, uh, we're going to use numbers. So here, we're going to use one, here, uh, here is zero, here one, and here we're going to use two. So this is still not working because process don't know which of them uh, it has to use. So here, if we use one, then the value that is stored in P0 will be outputted. And so it is 0 0.1. Uh, if we use uh, P1, then the value stored in P1 will be outputted. And so it is 0, etc. Uh, so to output uh, these three values uh, in a sequential composition, we're going to use uh, the sequential uh, iteration system from Faust. So uh, I'm going to declare a uh, counter name, which is I, and we want to have uh, three uh, uh, iterations. So actually, we don't want a sequential... Uh, sequential composition, but a parallel composition. We want a three iteration of P, okay. And now instead of one, I'm gonna use I here. And then we get the three different values we wanted to have uh, outputted all together at the same time in a parallel composition. Okay, so this is a very useful tool and we're gonna show you why. So for example, let's say that we wanna build a filter bank, a very simple, very basic filter bank. So now I'm gonna import uh, uh, the filter uh, .lib library, which is part uh, of the false distribution. So I call filter .lib. And actually, it is filters.lib. And yeah, of course, I don't have to forget the semicolon. And it is filter.lib. Okay, great. Uh, and in filter.lib, I have a one pole filter. Uh, and uh, this the name of the function used uh, for this one pole filter is pole. Okay. So here I'm going to clear that and I'm going to call the poll function. All right. So now what I want to do is to use the values stored in uh, the three different values stored uh, in P as a poll for uh, my one poll filter. So now what I'm going to do is to use P and put I again in it. Then I will have three uh, one pole filter uh, that I used in my process and they're all in parallel. So I said that I want a filter bank. So actually 
I want to have one input signal. So I will use the split composition here uh, to take one input signal and to split it out into three different signals and to send these signals to my filter bank. And at the end, I will merge uh, the three signals outputted by my three uh, one pole filter into one signal. And now I have a filter bank made of one pole filter. Okay, so one last thing about pattern matching. Now let's say that we want to describe a function to duplicate an expression several times in parallel. So basically doing pretty much the same thing than the parallel composition uh, system that we're using here in Faust. Okay, so I will clear all that. Uh, I will uh, declare process another time here. Okay, and I will uh, define a function which is called duplicate. Okay, uh, this function will have a pattern matching uh, system here and also uh, an input signal which is x. Okay, so this should work, great. Okay, so here, if I use duplicate uh, and if I just recall one, because this is the first version of duplicate, then basically uh, I just take uh, an input signal and I return this input signal. Okay, so PM stands for pattern matching here. Okay, now I'm gonna reuse uh, duplicate here, okay. And uh, instead of one, I will put a variable which is n, and uh, I still take the input signal which is x. Then I'm gonna put x here, create parallel composition, and then recall duplicate uh, uh, from the previous uh, declaration. And then I will uh, do n minus 1 and still x here. So we still have exactly the same results. But a different thing now is that, for example, if I use 2 here, then our input signal will be duplicated into two different signals. Okay, so basically what we did here is that we created a kind of loop and a kind of for loop and uh, basically we just define the number of uh, iteration we want just using pattern matching. Okay, so here if I put four, then my input signal, which is stored in X, will be duplicated uh, into four uh, different uh, signals. Now let's talk about primitives in Faust. Um, we won't detail all the primitives that you can find uh, in the Faust programming language because uh, that will be too long, but uh, if you wish to have more exhaustive list of them, uh, then we advise you to have a look to the Faust manual that is available online on our website and the link shall be displayed on your screen now. Okay, uh, let's just talk a bit uh, about the delay and table primitives. So before we said uh, that to create a delay uh, to a signal, we can just uh, use um, an apostrophe, so we'll create a one sample delay. Or if we want to create a longer delay, then we can use the add operator and then we define uh, the length of our delay line in number of sample. And in that case, the input signal here will be delayed by 10 samples. But uh, there is also uh, there are also actually uh, some more complicated way to create delay lines in Faust. We won't detail them here, uh, but just to tell you, we have two other operators, uh, which are the read table uh, operator uh, and also the read and write table operator that can be used to create uh, more complicated and um, more efficient delay lines. There is a 
tutorial uh, about it and uh, the link will be also displayed on your screen now. So if you want to learn more about that kind of thing, we advise you to have a look at it. Okay, another thing, uh, another kind of primitive we have in Faust and uh, that we didn't talk about yet are the selectors. Uh, we have two different selectors in Faust. We have uh, select uh, two and we have select three. Uh, basically, select two is taking uh, three uh, signal as input. So the first signal is uh, basically just a number which will be zero or one. Uh, if the first signal is zero, then uh, the first signal uh, here, so the second signal in select two, will be outputted. Uh, instead of using zero, if we use one, then uh, the third signal, so the second signal uh, from the two audio signals that we're using here, uh, will be outputted. Okay, and exactly in the same way if we use select three, uh, then we'll have uh, four different signal. The first signal will be the selector and the three other signal will be uh, the signal uh, that will be, that will have to be chosen, sorry. So zero for the first signal, uh, one for the second signal and three for uh, the third signal. Okay, one last thing we have to talk about uh, before jumping to compilation uh, in Faust and uh, the last thing you need to know to create a correct uh, DSP code uh, are the user interface elements. Faust user interface widgets allow an abstract description of the user interface from within the Faust code. This description is independent from any graphical user interface toolkits. So it is based on buttons, checkboxes, sliders, uh, and also other things that are grouped together using appropriate grouping schemes. As any other Faust elements, uh, these graphical user interface elements produce signals. So it can be combined with any other audio signal. So once again, in Faust, everything is a signal. Uh, even uh, this number here, one, is just a signal because uh, at every sample, basically, we we'll just have a signal and for, uh, for every sample, we'll have uh, one. Okay, uh, here as well, we won't detail all the graphical user interface elements because they are already detailed uh, in the online manual uh, that you can find on our website. Uh, however, uh, I would just show you how most of them work. Okay, so let's say that we want to create a very simple one voice mixer. Uh, so basically what we want to do is take an input signal and multiply it uh, by a value between 0 and 1. So we'll have a mixer. So here my false code is invalid uh, because uh, amp uh, is not defined anywhere in my uh, Faust code. So I'm gonna define it uh, here and instead of putting a static value I will use a user interface element here. So, uh, we have different user interface elements in Faust. Uh, we have sliders uh, that can be whether horizontal or vertical. So, um, to use an horizontal slider, we can just type H slider, which is the primitive for a horizontal slider. And uh, we could have used here as well a vertical slider, um, as well as an N entry primitive. So in that case, uh, we wouldn't have any slider in the graphical user interface, but uh, rather a uh, number box where you can directly choose the number uh, of amplitude. Okay. So let's say that here we're going to use a horizontal slider. Um, the first thing we have to tell, so the first argument for each slider is a string uh, that will name the slider in the graphical user interface. Uh, 
Uh, also, if you decide to compile your object as a max MSP or a pure data plugin, uh, that will correspond to the address where you'll have to find the, the value for uh, one specific parameter. So let's call it just amplitude here. Okay, so in the graphical user interface, the name of the slider will be amplitude. Uh, the next uh, argument of each slider is the default value of the slider. So here we're going to use zero, so the default value will just uh, cut the signal. The next argument is the minimum value uh, of the slider. Uh, after we have the maximum value and finally the last argument for a slider is the step of the slider. Uh, so we can use here for example 0 0.01 uh, so it is very it, it will be a very precise slider. So we can see the result here on the screen. Uh, so nothing very special in the block diagram, but uh, in the graphical user interface, we'll have an H slider. Uh, if we decide to compile this first code as a JackQt uh, application, for example, or uh, JackGTK, or any uh, standalone application with Thaust. All right, uh, so if I change the H uh, with a V, then you can see that it's working as well, and uh, then we will have a vertical slider. Uh, we can also have checkboxes, uh, buttons, and things like that. So in the case of checkboxes, uh, instead of having the choice between different values for, uh, well, more like a range of value for uh, one definition, then we will just choose uh, between two different values, which will be actually zero or one. Uh, so for example, if I want to put a mute button here uh, in uh, my simple slider, uh, I could use a check, uh, a check box primitive of as an input for the graphical user interface, and then I would just have to name it uh, with a string. So let's just say that this is a mute button, and uh, then I can just uh, add uh, mute here uh, to my algorithm. And then, uh, okay, that compilation should work. So in that case, uh, when the mute button is, uh, well, when the mute uh, checkbox is checked, uh, then uh, the signal uh, is, let, is let pass through. Uh, but uh, if it is unchecked, then the, the signal is uh, cut off. So that's not really what we want. So we can just uh, reverse the result of this uh, checkbox uh, just by putting a one and a minus here. So in that case, that will be a true mute button. Okay, uh, in those graphical user or in those user interface elements, uh, we might want to use metadata uh, to be more specific uh, about uh, the graphical user interface. So here, instead of using a vertical slider, we might want to use a uh, knob. So in that case, I'm going to use a metadata. So uh, metadata are declared uh, in the string uh, with square brackets. And uh, here I will just change the style uh, of the slider and I will tell uh, Thaust that I want a knob instead of a slider. So all the metadata types uh, are also detailed uh, in the manual uh, of Faust uh, available online on our website. Uh, this could also have been, for example, a unit. So here we have amplitude. Uh, so let's just say let's just say that the amplitude would have been in decibels. So it is not the case here, uh, but just suppose uh, that uh, it was in decibels, and then uh, we'll have uh, the decibel unit displayed uh, as one well on the graphical user interface.
We also have some system in Faust that will make it possible to create a ERRT uh, inside our Faust signal processor and that will be displayed uh, afterward uh, in the graphical user interface uh, using the age group or the V group primitive. But we won't detail that here uh, because this is already done in the, in the online manual. So if you want to learn more about it, we advise you one more time to have a look uh, to the Faust online manual.